Hi, I'm Carrie and I'm an engineer. The next 10 minutes is all about engineering and how engineers have used things from nature to help make better designs and better solutions. Engineering is all about solving problems to make things better for people and for the planet. Engineers design and create things that make life easier for us or help us to stay safe or help us to have fun. Ultimately, engineers are problem solvers. They find solutions to problems that humans have. Many animals and insects and plants have become problem solvers too. They found clever ways to stay safe or find food or communicate. And the solutions that nature has worked out can be used by engineers to solve some of our problems. This activity is a quiz about engineering and what ideas we've copied from nature to make things better for people. There are eight questions in total. In each question, I'm gonna show you a picture of something that's been engineered followed by three pictures of things from nature. One of these things from nature has provided inspiration for the engineered item, and it's your task to work out which one it is. You'll get a countdown from five to work out your answer. So think about it or discuss it, and then pick your answer before the time's up. After the countdown, you will see the answer and I'll give you a short explanation of what was copied. Question one. A bullet train. These trains are originally from Japan and can travel up to 320 kilometers per hour. For comparison, in the UK, trains travel up to 200 kilometers per hour. A whale, a kingfisher, or a cheetah. With a flat fronted train, the speed at which it can travel in Japan caused the build up of air in front of the train, which itself caused a loud boom and sometimes damage as it entered tunnels. This wasn't very good. By making the front of the train similar to a kingfisher's beak, the air doesn't build up at the front, so no boom and no damage. Plus, it turned out that the train could also go 10% faster, but using 15% less energy. Question two. Velcro, the stuff on shoes or coats or bags that you can open and close over and over again. Plant burrs, a caterpillar, or a gecko. If you walk through them or close to the plant, the burrs of the burdock plant cling to your clothes. When you pull the burrs off your clothes, they don't break or get destroyed, they're still the same. So you get them stuck on your clothes again and again. By using a microscope to look at the burrs closer, it was found that they had small hooks all over them, which are what attached to the threading clothes. After some experimentation, the design for Velcro was created. And if you look closely at both pieces, you can see that one side has a lot of little hooks and the other lots of small loops. Question three. Waterproofed things such as coats. A shark, lotus leaf or otters. If you pour water on normal leaves and plants, you can see that some water will cling to the leaf, but with a lotus leaf, all of the water will fall off it completely. It is hydrophobic, so not even a tiny droplet was left. This is because the lotus leaf has really, really small wax crystals all over them that stop the water settling on the leaf. And this is the kind of thing people making waterproof coats, tents or covers add to the material to make them waterproof. Question four. 
Solar cells used to collect energy from sunlight. Rose. Firefly. Or butterfly. The rose butterfly from Southeast Asia is cold-blooded and needs sunlight to get the energy to fly and its black wings have evolved to be very good at this. Using a microscope, scientists were able to see that each wing was covered in tiny scales that were covered in even tinier holes and that these holes were randomly sized and spaced so they didn't look neat. This made them great for collecting energy in the form of heat from the sun Solar panels using the same idea of randomly placed and sized holes could help us get more energy from the sun throughout the day. Question five. Ventilation and air conditioning, the way air moves around and in and out of buildings. Termites, eagles, or beaver. Termites themselves aren't really the answer here, but the structures they build to live in are. Even in some of the hottest countries in the world, termites can create structures that stay relatively cool thanks to perfectly placed air pockets within the structure. These air pockets create a natural ventilation system using convection, which to put most simply is where the cold air pushes out the warmer air. A construction company used this idea to build a shopping centre in Zimbabwe which uses 10% less energy than a traditional air-conditioned shopping mall. Question six. The blades on a wind turbine. Dragonfly, humpback whale, or sycamore pods. As wind passes over the blades of the turbine, it exerts a force on the blades, making them spin. But at the same time, there's a force called drag acting on the blades. Drag acts like a brake and tries to stop the movement. By adding the ridges to the blades of the turbine, in the same way that the whale fin has those ridges that you can see, we reduce the drag on the blades. And if we reduce the drag, we don't need as much wind or force to turn the blades. Tests have shown that the design with the ridges can generate the same amount of power at 10 miles per hour as the traditional design can generate at 17 miles per hour. So we need less wind to generate the same amount of power. And that's a good thing. Question seven. LED light bulbs. Rose. Bats. Or fireflies. The outer coating of LED bulbs, which is usually very smooth, reflects some of the light inwards, reducing its brightness. By studying the lantern of a firefly, the bit of the body that lights up, scientists found that the exoskeleton, where the skeleton of the creature is on the outside, not the inside, of the firefly, was jagged, with sticking out scales and a slope to it. This stops the light from being reflected inwards, so all the light is shone outwards. By using lasers to create a similar texture on LED light bulbs, the lights shone 50% more brightly. Question eight. Protecting ships. A duck, eel or shark?
Ships sitting in the water are likely to get algae and barnacles and other small sea creatures attaching themselves to the bottom. The small creatures could cause problems for the material the ship is made from, but also makes it harder for the ship to travel quickly through water. Sharks move through water really quickly and never get algae or barnacles growing on them. This is because shark skin is made up of tiny pointy scales and these tiny pointy scales have even smaller spines or bristles on top of them. This stops anything from settling on the shark skin and growing there. By making a coating for the ship's bottom that is like the shark skin, the ships can be protected, making them last longer and work better. How did you do?